For RCR Wireless News, I'm Sean Kinney, and it's a pleasure to introduce Andrew Vaz, Vice President of Product Management with Dell Technologies Telecom Systems Business. He's here to talk AI and network automation with us. So welcome, Andrew. Hi, Sean. Nice to see you. Uh, really looking forward to this conversation today. I uh, appreciate the time uh, for us to have this discussion. To kick this off, I want to throw out a data point from Gartner's most recent market guide for network automation platforms. And to be crystal clear, this is about enterprise IT networking, not telecom networking, but I think the points may be still relevant. The number here is that 65% of enterprise networking activities are performed manually. So Andrew, can you maybe bring that into the context of telecom and give us a kind of overview of what's gone right with network automation, what's gone wrong, and where are we today? Yeah, no, that is a, an excellent question. Um, yeah, I would say this. If I look at the telecom sector, um, this this automation is always a journey, is what we see. And um, it, it's kind of been variable. Uh, it's been variable in different customers. It's been uh, variable with different organizations within even the same customer, uh, depending on you know how the groups are siloed, how they look at their own automation um, technology. Um, I will say there has been a push to gradually integrate automation technology uh, throughout telco. And, you know, it has to do with, with the overall conditions, just the overall services they're trying to offer are becoming more complex. Um, they're scaling out quite a bit as well. Um, the, the demands of the service offering are, are actually, it's, it's critical infrastructure. So it's a pretty high bar. So the need for automation has, has actually been, been very clear. Um, I would say there's some, you know, macroeconomic conditions as well, where um, they have to be able to automate and make it simpler to actually implement these new services uh, that they're trying to. So automation has been critical. Just the, the speed of automation has been difficult in certain groups. Um, why is the next question, like how come with all these complexities? So what I would say is, you know, there's a lot of legacy systems already in place. Right. So actually either removing the legacy systems um, and moving to new ones or merging the new ones with the old ones is the place where I would say we've slowed down a bit in some of the automation work. Um, you know, we've talked to operators where they've had hundreds of automation systems based on acquisitions and different tool sets, et cetera. And they're really trying to think through a clean sheet of how their automation would look like going forward. Um, how it would integrate into their OSS, BSS uh, systems as well. So it's a large lift in, in a lot of cases. Uh, but I would say the journey has started because it's a, it's almost an imperative, uh, I would say, across uh, across the telecom industry. Um, you know, one of the things we really work on in, in Dell's telecom systems business is, you know, how do we actually get help the telecom operators to move uh, maybe from really rigid architectures to more flexible, automated, cloud-based architectures. Um, and we're starting to see an increasing appetite in that for different places in network or, you know, different pins in the network. Um, so it, it's been a pretty uh, pretty cool journey uh, for us as we start to see people adopt more and more of the technology. I would say it's steamrolling. It's starting to increase in pace and, and, uh, and traction across the uh, industry. Okay, so with the, the table set here, let's add AI into the mix. The pace of development is tremendous. The eagerness to invest is really picking up steam. And we're already seeing some impactful use cases that are delivering business value to operators today. I think bigger, longer term, the goal here is around using AI to build smart, adaptable, automated networks. So maybe give us some insight into what sort of broad steps operators should take as they adopt AI and move towards that long-term goal. Yeah, uh, you know, I, I was thinking about this. Um, we, we were recently talking to a number of operators um, uh, for just a recent trip to Japan and Korea on trying to explain how do you adopt AI where um, what are you trying to do with it? And, and we see a lot of parallels, uh, really, in terms of what we've seen on the enterprise side of the, of the house for different CSPs, et cetera. Um, so I'll, I'll break it down this way. I think the first step is really understanding use cases, because um, AI is, a, is almost a ubiquitous tool that can be used as a horizontal 
technology platform across multiple use cases. Okay, um, so the first thing I would say is start from your use cases. The second thing is to really have a robust data strategy. So based on the use cases, think about your data. Um, and this can mean a number of things, right? It, it can mean uh, understanding how you collect and analyze your data. How do you clean it? Uh, where is your data located it is, is also important as well. Uh, what we see is, especially from a cost effectiveness perspective and, and, a, and a performance perspective, bringing the AI to the data is actually very critical uh, from, from what we've seen. So, you know, use case, data strategy. Next up is what is your AI infrastructure architecture? You know, where do you put the AI is, is really critical. Uh, like I said, often you want to bring it to the data. Uh, we, we've built out a number of platforms that fit in different parts of the network based on um, power, size of LLM, uh, environmental conditions, et cetera, um, where we can place different uh, sets of GPU capability throughout the network. So infrastructure architecture is the next one. Um, and then I would say, if I look at it, you know, which LLMs are you going to use and, and how do you actually partner with an ecosystem to go think through the actual you know, um, implementation of the full AI stack. So that is something we've looked at at Dell. How do you bring all these disparate pieces together? Um, one thing I'm actually fairly excited about is um, some of our offerings where we put the Dell AI factory together for telecom. You know, We have a framework uh, with that and it essentially brings all of these different pieces together. You know, use case, data, infrastructure, software infrastructure, and then an overall services paradigm to kind of help people from, you know, soup to nuts, uh, try to implement AI use cases for them. Um, we found that the most effective way to actually go and make this real and think through the whole process. Another big piece of this isn't really about technology. It's about the people using the technology and it's the larger operating model that a particular CSP has in place. That all needs to change, right? To get to the most out of your AI investments, you've got to change your way of working. What does that look like in the real world? Yeah, you know, I would argue for any technology transformation, almost that uh, operational and cultural transformation is usually the thing that makes it successful or not, right? And it's the ability to actually use the technology and think differently. And so really for, for you know, telecom operators, for example, to maximize their benefit of AI and automation, there really has to be a transformation from an operational and even a cultural framework uh, for all of this. This could mean things like, hey, how do you adapt um, or adopt um, agile methodologies for your development, um, for your CICD testing processes, uh, DevOps processes, AI ops processes? Um, they're all common terms we say but you functionally have a different method of, of development and test and operations with all of these uh, techniques, which is frankly much faster, much more innovative. Um, it, it results in a much faster um, innovation cycle as well. And, and that's been proven through multiple, um, multiple verticals across various industries. Um, the second part is the cultural one. And, uh, you know, culture is almost an overused term like, ah, oh, we, you know, culture is important. We got to do X, Y, Z. Um, you have to have a culture that really embraces change and innovation. Um, also, that really wants to upskill employees. I, I think AI is a bit scary for a lot of organizations that haven't used it. Um, in some cases, it's not seen as a tool set that's going to make them more performant. It's it's seen as more of a threat. So, um Delivering a culture to go and do these type of things is really important. Thinking through your operational paradigm and how it's going to change. So you really benefit from all of the um, um, the goodness that AI brings is really critical. Um, you know, one of the things that, you know, Dell has been doing for a while for cloud transformation, which we're bringing to AI transformation here, is like a set of consulting and integration services um, that really help people walk through this journey. Um, I think it's an underappreciated part of the transformation because it it really impacts somebody's business and operating model, right? It's the life lifeblood of how people operate um, has to shift, and but I think it's it's um, 
it's absolutely critical. It's like a, it's a pillar of what has to happen in order to leverage all of this technology. And um, I think the organizations that actually do this are the ones you see that are bringing newest products that are differentiated to market. Um, they're having the best operational savings. They're seeing the benefits in their network in terms of network optimization. So, you know, it, it, you're absolutely right. There's the technology, there's the operations, then there's the people and the cultural pieces of it that all have to tie together and make this real. So AI ops, this word is coming up more and more in industry discourse and doing this as we kind of talked around, requires cultural and organizational overhauls, which have historically been a challenge for CSPs. Why will it be different this time around with AI and AI ops? Or will it maybe simply be different because the kind of macro conditions dictate that it has to be different this time? I I think it's not far off from that. Okay. Um, I'll I'll be honest. It's, let's picture this. You're, You're running a network today. As a telecom operator, um, you have a set of connectivity services. Um, you've seen what the macro ARPU looks like for, for your you know, macro RAN network, for example, across the board for consumer services. Um, nearly across the, the board globally, what we see is it's it's flat to down in some cases, right? Um, that's your that's your that's your profit line. Um, you can keep operating things the same way you've always operated them, but now let's layer on additional problem sets. You're being asked for new services. Uh, fundamentally, we're seeing telecom operators saying, "What? How else can I make money out of this network? What else can I do? Can I offer private networks? Can I go to enterprise?" The solution sets are more varied. Um, what you're finding is you're increasing not only number of services, um, an increase in bandwidth per service but also like number of endpoints. So multiply all of that together. Um, Add maybe an IoT service. Uh, We worked on a smart mine up in in Canada. Now you're talking about IoT, you're talking about other pieces, you're talking about managing an exponential number of new uh, endpoints potentially. You you can see how you have an explosion of, um, of operational capability that you need, right? So on one side, you're basically seeing the complexity not just increase, it's it's exponentially increasing. On the other side of the, of the equation, you also have, how do you manage it? Um, I will tell you, students coming out of school today, um, if you're bringing them into your company, this is how they operate. They operate in terms of DevOps. They operate in terms of cloud. Um, that's how they think. That's how they solve problems. Um, you, you have now a new set of people entering the workforce where you you need them to embrace technology the way it's meant. And you have to have those platforms as well to, to do that. So, um, and perhaps your current workforce is retiring um, or you have less numbers of those skilled people that know how to run the network in the old way. So, you know, multiply that together in some sort, do the math, if you will, on that, right? Increasing complexity, um, less number of people who can, who have your network expertise, all the people you're replacing them with in terms of youth or, or newer folks coming out of school learn and have been trained in operating in these types of models. Um, I personally view this as almost a, an existential question for, um, for operators that haven't moved already. Um, how do you stay relevant and how do you even operate your network if you don't you know, adopt automation faster, adopt cloud principles faster, adopt AI faster. I think it's now become a, you have to make the choice now in order to survive and be competitive in the market. So um, a lot of the macroeconomic conditions, the market conditions are really offering a clear pointer to what has to happen in a telecom network. Andrew, maybe you can share with us just some general market observations based on Dell's customer engagements. Uh, Interested to see what you're hearing around AI for network optimization and OPEX reduction, and then AI for also generating new service revenues. Yeah, that's a great great question. Like, is this real? Are people doing it in in essence, right? So, you know, we're seeing a a number of use cases that um, operators are interested in. Um, we've been writing them out. There's a massive number. Let me categorize them into three categories. Um, one is network optimization, as an example. Uh, one is operational improvement. And by that, I mean, 
uh, even customer experience. How do you offer a better experience for your customers? Uh, the third one is actually, hey, can I leverage AI to actually offer a new revenue generating service? All right. Um, so those are the three buckets, I would say macro buckets that I see in terms of where we group these use cases in. Um, we're seeing a number of, of interesting um, ISVs that we've partnered with that are bringing various solutions to the market. We're seeing ones around uh, network opt uh, optimization, uh, fault prediction, closed loop automation. Um, all of these reduce operational expenses. Um, they enhance services quality. A great example is some work that um, SK Telecom's doing with their AI chatbot. Um, I'm really excited about this one. It looks extremely promising. Um, this really shows how AI can both offer a better customer experience and potentially offer new service revenue as well. Uh, really what this, this chatbot does is um, it takes the customer interaction, it processes it, um, and it, it actually can offer them new services and actually communicate to the, to the BSS in, and OSS in the network to actually provision the new services as well and open those up. So it's kind of like, hey, here's your chatbot talking to a customer, finding out what they're not happy with or if they need a new capability and automatically driving that and automating that through the system. Like how's that for like a closed loop automation and AI use case? It, it's it's very cool. And really by doing this, you you increase customer interaction, you increase their customer loyalty, it potentially opens up new revenue opportunities for you as an operator uh, by you know being able to suggest and offer new services on the fly for them in a dynamic manner. Um, it's pretty exciting, you know. And this is being run on Dell's AI factory with NVIDIA, um, and you know it's 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 a pretty cool uh, use case um, that that we've seen. Um, we're keeping on developing this partner ecosystem. Uh, we have a number of uh, other ISVs we're working with, um, doing doing a whole different set of. Uh, of use cases like across the network, whether it's core OSS, BSS, like we just talked about, or even in the RAN for optimization around the RAN uh, for network troubleshooting, you name it. So it's it's pretty exciting. Maybe we can end, Andrew, with a bit of a summary here. AI is obviously going to impact the way communication service providers build their networks and run their businesses. As they go down this path, what do you see as those key considerations related to technology and to people that they need to maintain focus on? Um, you have to focus on the technological issues and the human elements, both. Um, otherwise, it tends not to be successful. Um, we're doing this for people, in, in essence. It's improving their operations. It's improving your customers' uh, satisfaction. It's improving your network operations. Um, but the people have to help enable this happen. Um, I'd say technologically, um, we talked about, you know, a data, um, a, a data strategy. Uh, second, really investing in a scalable cloud-based infrastructure that can support your AI deployments across the network. Um, that should absolutely be well thought out. And, and we're finding the numbers just make sense. If you have a persistent AI strategy, running it close to the data is actually critical in terms of cost uh, efficiency as well. Um, Back to the people side, you just nurture this environment of that values innovation and continuous learning because that's what's happening. That the systems are dynamically reacting, they're learning. The people have to embrace that because you're gonna be moving a lot faster than perhaps what you were um, used to in the past. Um, I, I would say the other thing is leverage the strategic partnerships that are happening in the market. Um, there's a lot of uh, building industry expertise uh, at Dell, we're, we're doing a lot with around AI. Um, we're, we're, we're learning the hard way um, in some cases, and you can be the beneficiary of that expertise and partnership ecosystem um, and companies like Dell um, and our, our, our entire partner ecosystem can really take you along very far on this journey. So um, that, that's basically it. I would align all those pieces with your business objectives as an operator and really marry those together. And, and come out with some really cool uh, and interesting solutions that affect both your bottom and top line. Really interesting conversation, Andrew. I appreciate you taking the time to share your perspective with me and with our audience. Thanks a ton, Sean. Yeah, I appreciate all the questions. They're, they're really good. 